Mandy, pretty sure. There we go. There we go. Andy, we're all live. We're live on Facebook. Again, another prior day. Prior day. Mate, uh, it, yeah. Well, the end of the week. Cheers, end of the week. Uh, all right, well, welcome along, folks. I hope everyone has had an awesome uh, week. Uh, I know Andy and I have had a pretty busy one. Crikey, I, I think uh, I think uh, I think it couldn't get any busier, and it has gotten busier. Some uh, cool things to talk about for me tonight. Um, a bit of extra boost from the government grant. Hey, and I want to point out, I told you so, didn't I say this? Go back and have a look at our wine and wisdom. I said the government would distribute cash through the building system. We'll talk about that in a minute. Not as much as I thought they would, but I think they've got something else in plan. So I'm going to make a call tonight and see if we're going to be right. Andy, you've got a few things to say as well. Uh, listen, gang, uh, for those who are, meet, are meeting us for the first time or need a reminder, Jason Witten's my name, Andy Fenton. Uh, we've both been in our collective industries or respective industries over 20 years, helping people uh, in all walks of life. But uh, my gig is real estate investing and finance. Andy's is banking and finance and financial planning and all things money. Um, and tonight we're going to sort of do what we always do on a Friday, Wine and Wisdom. We're going to debrief our week um, in our two respective worlds and hopefully pontificate a little and see if uh, any of our pontifications uh, help those listening in. If you do have some questions, Andy's going to monitor those questions today. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> I, think I, I think I'm going to try and monitor them too. But hey, guys, listening in, I, I'm pretty sure that people will want to know a little bit about the cash grant from the government, 25 grand. We're going to talk about that. If you've got any questions, you know, start putting them in the chat because we'd love to answer them with you guys. And... Um, you know, kick off the night. So, Andy, what what's uh, what's on your menu for the tonight's chat, mate? What's been happening in your week of the world well, for the week? Oh, mate, we both we both called uh, called two things correctly. So, yours was uh, well, it's been multiple things actually. Uh, but like you said, I mean, we've just been it's been all of a sudden the beginning of this week just ridiculously busy. Uh, things stepped up. One of the things that we called right at the beginning uh, was mergers and acquisitions. Yep. We're starting to see stuff drop, not just at the big level, but now I've got several clients that have all mentioned that this is now being uh, bandied around. So, you know, not not just from a, a vulture type perspective, but just good businesses aligning with good businesses in order to be able to leverage moving forward. So. Uh, I reckon if we're seeing that in the small to medium business and we're seeing at the top end, it's just going to go absolutely gangbusters. And uh, I look out, <laughs> look out all accountants out there and advisors because, uh, you know, this, this stuff is quite complex how it, how it un unravels, but really, really exciting. So there's heaps of opportunities there. I think we'll, we'll go with the budget first. I what just as an interesting Friday fact, uh, Amazon, so... It, now, if we go on the tech front for a little bit, because we had um, uh, we had a locket, a, ro a locket, we had a rocket launched into space. That's yeah. how tired I. Am. It's the the first glass of wine, and I'm already <laughs> starting. To, I already started. I thought you were having space. a wellness day yesterday, brother. Get the energy back. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and this this whole weekend will be uh, probably something along those lines. But so oh, we saw the uh, the rockets launched into space by SpaceX. Uh, uh, last week, and uh, FYI, it wasn't a fake; it was a real one. Uh, so that's uh, a pretty incredible <laughs> feat. If we go to the tech race, uh, Amazon have just taken a, a an acquisition, so another merger and acquisition uh, of Zooks, uh, Z O O X. Really interesting uh, company to have a look at. Uh, they it's actually the, the CEO of Zooks is an Aussie, Aussie Blake over in Silicon Valley, and they are one of the uh, driverless cars or the leader tech companies in the driverless car space yeah right. uh, really cool stuff yeah they, they, these cars are incredible mate. They, they don't have a front and the back or the front and the back are interchangeable uh you sit in the car facing each other it has uh, fog radars for for, for, uh, for pedestrians and dogs and, and stuff like that all of the wheels move like all four wheels so it can literally move sideways so they're in operation now, like they're operational driverless cars. Uh, so no, it's the technology. So they've got the operations up. I don't know if they've got one running around uh, the world at the moment, 
but it's it's not just an automated car it's like a complete it's a car designed to be driverless right. whereas a lot of driving cars at the moment are, are like a tesla but souped up with technology but it's still four doors and you know yeah. front and back yeah this is a completely new design so, so Am- well. amazon, so, amazon's purchased them yep they just purchased them yeah what do you think it's about good. amazon being the um What's the what, what? What was the company in Terminator? Mm. Skynet. Skynet. What do you reckon, Amazon Skynet? It could be. You know, I've 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 always said that the Fifth Element is one <laughs> of the most uh, crazily visionary films of, of the last century. Yeah. And basically, yeah. everything that they put in there has come true on some level. So, I, yeah. I've forgotten whether it was Zone Industries or, but. Um, you, the scary thing is that if one of these companies, whether it be Facebook, whether it be um, Amazon, Google, or whatever, they end up with the wrong person at the helm of them, uh, then it can be a pretty scary future because they'll control so much. But uh, really interesting to see Amazon jumping into that driverless car space uh, because previously not on the radar for them, right? So just what it's 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 just an interesting point, but it's it's also something to note where these big companies are going to start diversifying across multiple different areas and trying to gain slices of each other's pies yeah. uh, in order to be able to, you know, potentially dominate that market. So, and that provides a whole lot of opportunities then down the downstream. So I think after we chat about the stimulus package, chat a little bit of equipment leasing and finance uh, for people in business, you want to get that stuff. So just before the quick, uh, quick prelude to it is, you've got to get that stuff in as at yesterday because they might have uh, relaxed the banking legislation that relates to mortgages uh, and the process a little bit, but apparently equipment leasing and finance is as hard as it's ever been. Uh, so, and also stock levels low. So we'll go into that later on and I can share some insights into some of the, the, the few friends who are hedge fund managers as, as to what their views are on the market. But mate, the big one, which everyone's talking about, which is a 25,000 that you predicted uh, into the property market by way of new builds uh, subsidies and um, and renovation subsidies. Now I've gone through this with a fine tooth comb, mate. But what's your uh, what's your take on it, mate? Uh, like my my quick take on it is it's really going to it's really going to help first home buyers who are getting a leg up anyway. Um, that's it, it like uh, you know, but it's free money, so I'm pretty pumped about it. Uh, anyone who's got uh, uh, a first home still ahead of them or, you know, um, have still got good employment right now and can afford to buy their first home right now, depending on where you are. But for most people, you know, uh, a home under the stamp duty threshold in each of the states. So that depends. It ranges from 500 grand to 650 in, in Victoria and New South Wales and so on. Uh, most first home buyers right now uh, can get a free house, a free home, and you know, doing the math, probably put between ten and twenty thousand dollars of cash in their pocket and walk away with a free home with this extra grant. So let, let me break it down for everyone. Just just um, you know, if we have a look at it, we'll look at the first home buyers first, and then we'll reverse engineer to other people who might want to build a home and then renovate it. Yeah. Um, so the first home buyers really, I think, are the ones that are really going to benefit from this unbelievably, fantastically. Number one, a first home buyer was already getting a, a, a dollar grant from um, a, a local government or a, a state government already. So it ranges from, you know, $8,000 to $20,000 across Australia. Uh, so down in Tasmania, it's 20 grand. Regional Victoria, um, you know, uh, is 20 grand. Um, Queensland's fifteen thousand dollars. New South Wales is ten. Victoria, you know, and so on. So different grants, but I'm just going to use I'll use Queensland, my backyard, as the example right now. So free cash already for a first home buyer, fifteen thousand um, dollars. Then if a if a purchaser in Queensland was to buy under the stamp duty threshold, which was five hundred thousand dollars, they would pay zero stamp duty. So that's that's on average around about fifteen thousand dollars as well, um, if you use the full exemption. Um, if the purchaser could lend at ninety five percent, 
then uh, they would need to pay some lenders mortgage insurance. Uh, right now, the government has, it has said they're reinstating the lenders mortgage insurance scheme for first home buyers as well. And so that's reinstating on the 1st of July. So let's say you qualify for the first home buyers uh, lenders mortgage insurance scheme as well. So you don't pay any lenders mortgage insurance fees. Um, and then let's say you get $25,000 extra boost right now um, as well. And I know nearly every decent builder and developer in Australia now is offering a five or a $10,000 extra cash boost or an extra something or other to get someone over the line. They might take it away with this boost now, but it could be still hanging around. So if you add all that up in Queensland per se right now, um, you know, someone who can borrow at 95% puts $15,000 of real cash in their pocket and owns a home for $500,000, no mortgage insurance, no stamp duty, uh, for about $400 a week, which um, is $50 cheaper than the median rent in, say, Brisbane, um, which is four fifty. Wow. So it, it's a never... I'm a, Like I was telling this to my young young team members in, in Positive, like you guys, there's, there's three or four of them, like quite young. They're, they're new. They're, they're in sort of admin and marketing and so on and, and they're ready to roll and I'm like guys you will never get this opportunity ever again the government has just laid it out on a platter for most people who've never bought a home to get a free one free house guys free house um bloody hell I wish I had that when I was when I were a lad I you know like you'll end up with a house which is cheaper than rent uh for free and 15 grand cash in your pocket that's if you do that properly um now, there's a few caveats in that gang. There's a few caveats. You've got to know your finance well. Uh, unfortunately, most brokers aren't very good at this and banks are even worse, okay? Understanding how to do this properly and, and in sequence. Uh, I was just talking to one of my guys here. Uh, when she met her husband, she'd never purchased a house and the broker didn't even suggest that um, she should buy her own home, um, you know, as because she'd never bought her own home. Like it, it, was, it was ludicrous. Anyway, um, and the builders, the builders, um, unfortunately, sometimes they see this as a bit of a boon as well. And they're like, well, we'll put the prices up. Okay, that's what will happen. Um, they'll get a chance to put prices up. You, so you've got to understand how to price, understand the price of constructing a house at the very least. Uh, and, and what will happen is builders will say, yeah, we can build it, we can build it. They'll grab the business. Uh, and once you sign the contract, they can take 12 months to build it, not six months to build it, and you can do nothing about it. So this is where this is where in these times, like you know, the pink bat, bat scheme and all sorts of other bloody schemes, uh, they're they're fantastic if you understand how to take advantage of it uh, and who is going to deliver on it in a timely manner and and properly. So first home buyers right now, seriously, if anybody's listening with with adult children, um you're a first home buyer, you'll never see this again, you'll get a free house and you'll put cash in your pocket. The other one, Andy, is if you're a parent right now and you've got quite a lot of equity in your home and you're happy, like you, you've got your stuff organized, you can put your home up, uh, it's called an equity loan to your children for a first home. And has has what um, a bunch of my guys have had ha um, help their kids do. They put their equity up in the home the home is used as security for the deposit. So, um, and their kids get to bank all of the cash. So they get to put the $40,000 in their bank account um, instead of it going uh, elsewhere. So, um, and it just basically goes in the offset account. And so we've been able to do a strategy with two of my first home owners um, where they get their first home and they keep the cash and now they're getting uh, approved for finance for their first investment property. So basically, if you were an investor right now, uh, yeah, but you needed, you were going to do your first home, you could own a first home for free and you could buy your first investment property all in one go if your income allowed right now. It's crazy. It's awesome. I, it pumps me right up um, for setting those sorts of people up. Anyway, I better stop there because that's the first home buyer discussion um in that sort of space 
Isn't isn't there some stickiness around this? And I've only really started putting my eyes over it today. But the um, the construction actually needs to start. So they've got to turn dirt within the next uh, within three months of contract date. Correct. Uh, so just remember so the grant the grant goes till the end of the year. Yeah. So yeah. So it, I, one of the one of the things to be very very mindful of if you're going out and doing it is don't just. I wouldn't be allowing for those uh, for the contracts to have uh, long t long dates on them. I don't, I'd be still no. saying, well, look, if we, if we access this, we, we've got to have a clause in there that says that you turn over dirt before uh, before the period of time's up. Yeah. So there's there's a little thing that we've sought clarity on, Andy, especially for houses. Okay. So houses. Um, so so there's we're, we're we're diving technical, but I'll do it anyway, just quickly. So there's a thing called registered land. Okay, which means the builder can, can get on there tomorrow and start building. And there's actually a thing called unregistered land, which is approved by council. It has, it has an approval, but there's no um, titles and there's no um, infrastructure yet. So they can't release the land. Um, and so builders can, or land developers can sell unregistered land. So you can sign a contract on unregistered land it's subject to the titling and so on. Now, don't get caught in this, gang. This is where a lot of people get caught. They'll, they'll get caught in an unregistered piece of land and six months later, it's still not registered um, and then you'll miss out on the, on the grant, uh, Andy. So good, good, good pickup. So registered Thank piece of know. land. Yeah. Um, so, and here's the drill. Uh, this happened last time uh, in the GFC. Uh, there was some boosts, some first homeowner boosts after the GFC. I don't know if you remember that. They 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 brought in some boosts and some encouragement for people to get out. And the place uh, like land went spastic. So so what we did, what we had for at positive, we had our team members camping out in tents for two days. This, this is not that's not even an exaggeration. In Sydney, they were camping in tents for two days to stand in line uh, to buy people um, properties or buy land. Um, because you had to line up and you had to stay there. It was like you're in line for the first iPhone or something like this. So like right now that's going to happen. I've got a good friend, you and I know her. Uh, she's in Newcastle um, and I'm trying to help her buy her first uh, or buy a property. She's entitled to the grant, but not the first homeowner grant. And we've been going back, for going back and forth for two days now since the announcement came out and literally that property sold, that property gone. She, like she can't get hold of any of the salespeople. Like that, I like it's, it's on like Donkey Kong gang. Like, and um, I like, like, you know, I've been saying it for months, months and months and months, even before COVID, this was going to happen anyway, but now this has exa exacerbated it. So um, yeah, but good pick up on the, the, the rego date. On the off the plan though, on the off the plan. So you can apply it for an, uh, an apartment or a townhouse. Um, but we're getting some clarity on that because that one's the tricky one, Andy. That one's the tricky one. Yep. Yeah. So um, don't rush into an apartment or a townhouse first home buyer without some really clear understanding of how that applies. In a house, it's actually very clear. We know the rules right now. It's, it's actually very clear. Like it's got to start within three months of you signing the contract. That, that's not unclear, you know? Yeah. Uh, the other, other things just... Actually, and, and I haven't got any clarity on this, mate. So uh, when it talks about uh, you are a natural person, not a company or a trust, is, is that referring to the title uh, owner? or yeah, the, the? Yeah, you have to be an individual, a person. It has to be Andy Fenton, not, you know, uh, one, two, three company as trustee for the Andy Fenton Trust. It can't be a trust or a company. Yeah. So that's whoever's on the title. So... Uh, Correct. Not necessarily apply for it. Uh, it. Must be over the age of eighteen. I've already had a couple of people uh, that have clicked off emails saying, "Does this mean that I can buy houses for uh, for my, you know, almost unborn <laughs> children?" No, it doesn't. But good thinking. Um, Australian citizen, and then there's a couple of incomes tests as well. So, uh, for an individual, one hundred and twenty-five thousand, yep. based on two thousand eighteen, two thousand nineteen. So we can't go back and change our tax returns or maybe you can actually but well if you haven't done it yet yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh as a couple 200 grand a year uh, by the looks of it. yeah yeah 
So as well, long as you're in those zones. Yeah, yeah. If you're in those zones, um, and I'll just quickly show you just quickly because I want to just show off my stuff here. You know, um, I'm up in the corner. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, must be used for your Prince Place residence. So um, not for investment properties. The means testing is there, 125 grand um, for a single. So that's not too bad for most of Australia. But, you know, I've had conversations with people, Andy, already, especially in places like Sydney. And there's people on over $125,000. You know, a first home in Sydney, you're looking at, you know, 650, 700, maybe even more. Um, and they don't qualify. So it doesn't help. It doesn't help the people who are struggling already, right? It actually helps. Like it, this is where I don't think they thought it through as good as they should have. It actually is helping the people who already were getting the help already. It's just actually made it so much better for that person who's already qualified for it, right? You know, because you know, old mate in Sydney is not going to qualify, um, you know, for a seven hundred eighty thousand dollar house. Um, you know, because that's the only thing they can afford brand new down there. You know what I mean? So with the grant and the stamp duty concession. So it's like, yeah. Anyway, so, but yeah, listen, it's pretty good. It does, it does have a, a renovation tinge in there as well. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, let, I mean, I, no, number one, I don't think anybody's going to move out of the house that they're in for an extra 25 grand. So like, you know, unless it, you already had in your mind, you were going to go build a new home to live in. So that's a very small portion of people right now. Um, I, I don't think you or I, Andy goes, well, shit, let's get 25 free cash from the government. We're going to build a new house and we're moving in, Magda. Let, just just give her, just let her know, Andy. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I was looking at it. I was like, oh, holy hell, how do I get my hands on this? <laughs> it's probably, well, I don't know about you, Andy, but it'll cost me 25 grand to bloody get my shed packed up and uh, move somewhere else anyway. So I'm not, I'm not moving. Um, but, uh, it, but the renovations, that's not bad. It's probably, you know, that's, that's a bit of lip service. I think the old reno, um, it's just like, if you're, you know, if you're already spending 150, an extra 25 grand, great, but you know, you're not going to go out and spend 150 right now. I wouldn't expect, uh, on mass. So in my world, this is really going to be a boon for the first home buyer. This is first home buyers. This is the best you'll ever get ever. So like, do not miss this gift off your butt and get yourself a house. Um, even if you follow all the rules and live there for the, 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 the qualified period of time, which is 12 months or six months or whatever in your state, you can always move out of it after, after you do your compulsory time in the, the relevant property and it'll be, become a free investment property. So, and it's cheaper than renting for the 12 months anyway. So anyway, that's where, that's where um, I reckon you know, everyone should be into it, Andy, for me. Mate, I, I, absolutely. I think it's, it'd be really interesting to see how, how everybody responds to this. But as we've said with other areas of this, um, uh, of all of the legislation, all of the opportunities that have arisen out of COVID uh, legislation, is you kind of got to be quick on it, right? Because once the banks, once the builders, once the market, once people start to figure this stuff out, what ends up happening is like what you said, builders will price up. So the 25 grand just gets absorbed in builders or the people figure out ways of being able to you know, arbitrage, for better lack of a better word, the opportunity well, It's, it's free market movement, right? Like you talk about this all the time. Like that's, that's what the free market movement's all about, right? Like, you know, that's the theory of it, isn't it? Yeah, but so if you don't, and if you, you've got to be considered, but if you don't get in quick, then the opportunity might still be there, but it, it's it been eroded by other factors of, of people actually figuring this stuff out. Yeah. So it's one of those things just, it won't be around for long uh, and the opportunities that sit behind it won't actually be there for long either until they get, you know, maybe not completely obliterated, but just slightly eroded by people's you know moving and shoving so i'd be looking at it straight away and but i actually reckon there'll be a fair bit of take up on the um on the reno like we we don't qualify but uh mate i i, I was i was trying to figure out it. the reason why i was looking at it so hard is i was trying to figure out any little loophole i'm like surely i can fix something out of here <laughs> uh but uh, i reckon there'd be a number of people who kind of be in that 
in that boat where you know they've, they've got the money uh, marked for that period of time. Uh, so I reckon there'll be, and I've already seen a lot of builders already jumping onto Facebook and those sorts of things and talking about that it's time to time to renovate, you know, it's time to do it, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So I think we'll see a fair bit happening in that space yeah. as well. So it'd be really, really, really interesting. Well, uh, what's going to slow this down is the lenders. And um, interesting, Andy, you know, um, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but uh, um, the government said, listen, you know, all of the APRA stuff, uh, guys, like, let's, let's push that out six months. Right now is not the time to implement new reforms in finance. Um, I think you and I were talking off air the other day. I don't know if we were doing it on air, but I, yeah, I, I think the APRA reforms are gone. It's over. We just wasted a lot of time and money and actually caused a lot of grief in the Australian economy. Um, uh, that's my that's one of my calls, <laughs> you know. Um, so, uh, but like the Achilles heel in all of this stuff is going to be the speed to getting, uh, you know, lending out to the marketplace like leverage. Um, you know, whether you agree with it or not as a as a, a whole, like you think, you know, leverage is kind of like a dangerous instrument or not, it's it's how our how our economy works. Um, and at this point in time, when when leverage and money is slow, um, it really puts the skids on. And um, they haven't solved it yet, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's still hard, like you just mentioned. Um, so. It's going to be the Achilles heel in all of this stuff. You know, the banks need to move fast um, in 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 making this stuff work. You know, so you know it's going to be. Yeah, and, yeah. and they have slowed. Like they they've really slowed in yeah. in a lot of these areas. So it's one of those things that I guess as for people who are really thinking about it, you just got to get on the phone to your brokers. Uh, if you don't have them, let us know. We'll put you in touch with them. But we can connect you, with one of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've got to get on to them like now, even if you don't end up proceeding, which probably our broker friends won't like me saying that. No, <laughs> Just no waste any of bloody time, but, you know, if you, if you want to do it, you've got to do it. My call too yeah. um, is, you know, this scheme's only like $600 million worth of extra boost, right? So it's, it's in the scheme of things, it's not a lot. It's not a lot of dough. Uh, I, I think they're saving their money for the stamp duty attack. So, you know, there, here's my call. I think they're going to have a crack at it. They're going to have a crack at sort of changing what stamp duty means to everybody. Um, but what, what I've seen suggested actually is kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, some of the, the suggestions of changing stamp duty from a one-off payment to an annual payment, um, you know, long-term, if you're an actuary or you, you like a good spreadsheet, um, you know, <laughs> given the choice, I'd probably do the upfront payment rather than the ongoing payment. So um, anyway, it's interesting. It's interesting. You never know what goes on in these crazy weird times, Andy. But you know what has, I don't know, because this history is interesting thing, right? Like, I don't know if you remember, New South Wales thought it was amazing. You know what we're going to do? We're going to bring in an exit tax. Um, uh, I don't know if you remember it. Now we're going to charge 2% for people selling their houses in like, so not like an ex, it was a duty for selling their house in New South Wales. And it was just prior to the GFC. It was actually fantastic for property investors who weren't selling their houses because it actually just smashed the New South Wales property market for, um, for, for developers. It, like it just, it, it napalmed it. And, and we did about 2000 deals in Sydney at heavy discounts after the GFC, but yeah, they, when they mess around with this stuff and they don't think about those sorts of things very, very well, um, it has some adverse effects. So anyway, I, listen, I think New South Wales, by and large, Sydney, Sydney is still got a lot of pain to go in the real estate market. Um, I think the rest of Australia is going to fare pretty well, actually, um, from what I can see. We, like in Queensland right now, our property management business is getting uplifts in rent like renting properties for more, 20, 30, 40, $50 more in the middle of COVID than the previous renter. So I, I don't think Queensland by and large has got a huge amount of pain. Melbourne, some reductions, but not massive. But I think Sydney is the one that's going to get beaten up. But anyway, um, yeah. But the grant, we're good. I'm, I'm pumped. Andy, anyone listening in, if you need some help with it, let me know. 
it's um it's exciting times they're going to give you free money <laughs> it's, it really was it's incredible watching people respond to it uh, yeah. i'm just seeing if i can find uh in here because sort of to talk to your that, that comment in around leverage and and, and um see if I can find it here because effectively what's what we're seeing happening and, and when you talk about the pain and, and how long it's going to last is that markets tend to just operate so much more efficiently and faster now so when we do look back at, at history and we start to go okay well what is it likely to look like moving forward uh, and I'm not saying that it's going to necessarily go in this direction but what we've seen is every time uh, we've put, we've gone through the next big challenge, you know, whether it's Black Monday, Black Wednesday, you know, uh, whether it's the GSC, you know, all of all of these periods of time, the recovery cycle has been significantly faster each time, and you know, there's a large a large amount of that is due to the, the flow of information, how quickly information actually is disseminated. A large part of it is to to do with the availability of funds. So if we do see debt debt drying up uh, then that slows it down but there's been a lot of government movement to try and make sure that the banks are fluid and are circulating money so that it can be recirculated around so it's quite likely that in the property world as as with the share market but the property world we we may see some you know period of, of downturn of, of prices in pockets of you know of real estate but it'll likely be for a far shorter period of time than what it, it has. And if we have a look at the, the more recent times where property property got you know a bit of a shellacking like in the GFC, it actually rebounded really quickly okay. uh, in the scheme of things. Yeah. So it's one of those things to, I guess, quality is always going to be a front of mind. Uh, so if you're not in the quality area or if you're not buying quality stock, then yeah. you, know, you could be staring down that barrel of some of a potentially bad buy but there's also going to be able to create all of these little opportunities that are in there as well. And so I guess in the mindset of people who are sitting there going, oh, it's going to be long, it's going to be long. It may not. It actually may be something that provides very, very fast opportunity and then uh, gets on with business. And all of that really is going to depend on, on larger factors that are, are largely out of our control. Yeah. But certainly as far as efficient markets are concerned, that's how the journey will actually progress. So I think the real opportunity hat needs to come on, especially if you start to see some, you know, downturn in property prices and some pain in property prices. Yeah, because I mean, reality is, and it was the same in the GFC. Um, you know, mum and dad's, you know, like what, what choice do you have? Like, you know, you sell your house and then what? You've got to go rent. It's expensive to rent anyway. Um, so most people knuckle down if they own a home, they, they sort of cut expenses elsewhere and they pay their mortgage. In Australia, you can't walk away from your mortgage without some pretty serious repercussions. In America, everyone's going, oh, the prime mortgage collapse in America. Uh, it, was, it, was, it, it, was not, it was nothing the same. It wasn't even, wasn't even the same breed of animal. Like we were talking about a dog and we were talking about a cat, you know, like just because they had four legs doesn't mean that they're the same thing. You know, in America, you know, you and I, if we had a mortgage, we can walk away. Like we walk away in Australia, the bank comes after you and they can bankrupt you. In America, you just don't have a good credit rating anymore. And then you just go to a bikey and get a loan and you can buy another house. I knew people that, <laughs> and I'm looking, I knew people in the GFC in America handed their keys in and they and they were in Las Vegas. And, and literally they walked three houses down, did a vendor finance deal for half the mortgage, half. 50%. They just handed their keys back in, walked three houses down, walked into a brand new house, exactly the same layout, wasn't any different. Um, and they did a vendor finance mortgage with someone else um, for 50% less. And all, all they did is they had a credit rate, a bad credit rating for five years. And they were like, well, who cares? We, we don't care. We're not going to borrow any more money anyway. So uh, that, that, that didn't happen in Australia. You couldn't do that in Australia. Like you had to sell your house and then the bank came after you for the, for the losses and the damages and then they bankrupted you. End of story and you're out, right? You don't walk down the road and get a secondary, like go at it, right? So Australia is not the same as America and I don't understand Europe's finance so I wouldn't comment on it but I, do, I certainly know America and Australia very well. 
right now, it's you know, um, yeah, you can comment on, on Europe as well, but like right now in Australia, guys, if you've got a 5% rental yield in your property and your interest rate is 2.5% or 3%, like, like what, where's your pain? You haven't got any. Like you've got no pain. Like it's not like it, the pain it, and if you're a homeowner and you're like, well, I can't make my mortgage payment because I've lost the COVID. Well, you put your mortgage on pause. Uh, you get JobKeeper or job seeker. It's pretty, it's fairly easy to do that. So you're not on the street. So by and large, it's uncomfortable emotionally and mentally, but you know, at least you're getting by and you don't have to pay. So right now, unlike the GFC, there's no like desperation selling. Uh, like by and large in bulk um, in that way, we will see the pain, Andy, where people purchased investment properties with yields of 2% and 3% because they believe growth would go on forever. That's where we'll see the pain. Uh, that, that, that's where we'll see the pain. You know, um, uh, and that that was predominantly in Sydney and a little bit of Melbourne. Yeah. So. Yeah. What about Mate, Europe? As a, as a What's the go with Europe's debt? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I got the slide on uh, on Europe. Uh, Europe is a bit of a different beast. Uh, there's a lot of old money in Europe. A lot of uh, you know quite densely populated areas, and, and it changes from from country to country in Europe, yeah. there's no Complicated. standard. Yeah, like in, in Italy, it, basically your, your your family house tends to be remaining the family for many, many years and generations. Yeah. You know, they don't turn it too often. Well, there's multi-generational rentals over there, right? Like, you know, yeah. you hand the rental from family to family, it's kind of like your house, but you're renting it from the landlord and it's like a really low rate because old mates owned it for 2,600 years or something. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, like, it was crazy. I went to the UK. My sister got married, and um, we were in a little, uh, oh, not a little town, but a town called Worcester, uh, and we were living in a little village um, outside of Worcester uh, for, you know, for a week or two while we were going to the wedding. We went to a pub, and the pub was four hundred and twelve years old, and and I was standing in a building, you know, by and large, you know, and this is kind of very. It's a very white Australian thing to say. So, like, I just don't don't take it out of context. You know, you know, you know. Prior to Captain Cook coming along, you know, there were no other buildings in Australia. Do you know what I mean? Like, as, as in, like, like that sort of stuff. You know, that the the original owners of the land here, or the occupants of the land, you know, go back tens of thousands of years. But in this, in the in the box of this context of conversation, you know, Australia and buildings and investing and that sort of stuff you know far out compared to europe nothing you know like <laughs> it's just like you know like you said old money like australia's got nothing you know in in that perspective right at the end of the day probably probably nothing that would uh which would stand up for 400 years <laughs> i think most <laughs> of the would be tear downs after that time uh, yeah it was amazing though. I love, I love that trip. But anyway, so mate, what's going on in your neck of the woods, brother? Like, you know, um, plenty of stuff going on over in, in the business land and the banking land. So you said, you know, acquisitions, mergers and acquisitions, it's on. Like you said, it's going to happen. Like, you know, there's opportunities there for businesses to be purchased. Um, what's yeah. the knock-on effect, the flow-on effect for us as investors? Well, I, well, I guess from a, a market perspective, it's, you know, having a look at the movers and shakers because that where companies kind of merge like this, what what it does have the potential to do is is uh, really take growth of some of these companies and, and take it to the next level because you're you're effectively taking something that's small and nimble uh, and quite often you know rapid rapid change, rapid movement, uh, very little red tape, and they're you know acquiring this asset and as long as they don't put the red tape in place, then they can very quickly create additional uh, sources of revenue and, and really enhance the growth of the underlying company. So, you know, having a look at some of these future positions. Now, it's, it's difficult because the American market bounced back super, super quickly. But if you're looking at long-term plays with these companies like Amazon, like it's just it's good to be aware of these types of uh, acquisitions that are going through because it just uh, it, all other things being equal, when they're successful, they will drive indexes to new heights. Uh, when whenever that time is to come, yeah. but having said that, having a chat uh, yesterday with with a friend of mine who runs 
uh, very, very successful hedge fund. And I sort of, we had the conversation, I said, look, talk to me about markets because, you know, what's, what's, your, talk, what's your take? What's, what's happening in China? What's happening in, in Japan? What's happening around the world? And because it bounced back pretty, pretty aggressively. And now it's, we're seeing it in Australia as well. And their position is that they're, they're kind of short everything at the moment. Um, and they keep shorting and the market keeps growing and they keep shorting and the market keeps growing. Like, oh God, this thing's got to come down at some point. So, so uh, shorting, shorting, for those who don't understand the language, is they're betting on the market to go down, right? Yeah. 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 yeah these are guys whose funds, you know, do... It, this, is, this is family money. This isn't retail money. This is yeah. big, big money, top end of town sort of stuff. Yeah, uh, and you know they they spell average you know ten to fifteen percent year on year on year on year. You know they're they're freaks, and um, yeah, so they they're all betting against the market, but the market just keeps on going up, and it just keeps on going up, and so they they just keep their, their short positions keep getting busted. Um, so it's it's really interesting. It's kind of driving along, but what we've seen is we've started to see a bit of a move from stocks that uh, benefited from. COVID, like Ancel's and, and and the like, yeah. And now it's moving into like we saw Qantas start to jump a little bit, so that's interesting now. So there's that's probably expectations of you know things opening back up. Um, potentially, whatever happens with Virgin is going to be very very interesting because if it's a listed entity that ends up taking it over, then that will be quite you know, quite an interesting play. Not necessarily a buy. It's certainly one of the front runner part. on the bid. I, I haven't been paying attention. Have we got a front runner on the bid? So someone came out at the last hour, didn't they? What was it? What was their name? AMH or something? Yeah. So I, I, no reports as to who's doing better than than anybody else at this point in time. You 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 would generally put a fairly heavy bet on on Queensland actually trying to take the ownership of it. And yep. uh, and let's face it, you know if. If anybody is going to be able to throw a whole lot of money at something and uh, and potentially not get get the best return out of it, it's probably going to be government or semi-government, right? So, um, so I reckon they'd have to be a front runner in it. Not a bad uh, move, right? You know, buy yourself an airline, you know, and, and boost up your your. I mean, I don't know what, what was the price they were asking. Let, let's do a quick business analysis on this. I mean, gee, you know, you know, make make. Well, Make all planes landing into into Queensland Airport for Virgin for free. Don't charge me, think, but you're going to bring in tourism and dollars. Like, you know, everyone will fly into Queensland and then bust down to Sydney. You know, I don't know. Gee, it's it's not a bad move. Uh, look, I, it makes a lot of sense to do it, yeah. and uh, as I said, they've got they've got the point. But they've also got a large part of the population there that was actually employed by them. So, yeah. you know, they're really they're potentially paying to employ their their team. So better to buy an asset. And just gift the money away to the uh, to the underlying team members. But anybody who gets involved in that side, you know, really has to be quite careful about maintaining the structure of Virgin the way that it is, because if they actually take it and try and get too clever with it or try and put their own spin on it, mate, right, then it's yeah. just going to be an absolute freaking disaster waiting to happen. And yeah. the problem is when you know if you don't use the efficiencies of somebody like Virgin, then Everything you know, every second that a plane set spends longer on a tarmac than what it needs to is going to, is costing you serious, serious dough. And if you think you've got a fleet of you know 500 planes and every time they're a minute longer on the deck than what uh, than what they need to be, it's a thousand dollars. The bill adds up pretty quickly. Yeah, and uh, then it just might go from one set of hands to another. Well, so, I'm keen for them to sort of resurrect in one way, shape, or form because I've got a lot of uh, Virgin frequent flyer miles that I want to. <laughs> This, oh. this was the first year. It was the first year. I said to myself because I, I was sick of forgetting about things and then booking last minute flights and getting just beaten up on price. So I've gone, not this year, Andy. Not this year. This year, you're going to book ahead and you're going to get you know good deals right the way through. Flexi where you need to. Bang. So I sorted out the whole first half of year travel, all with Virgin. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so I might have to pick up some stocks in uh, in in in, uh, in Qantas just to make up for it. Just to make so, it. so that that's that's the interesting thing, mate. And, and markets up. Well, the market was down, but only 0. 0.4. Uh, 
today. So in Australia, markets have been really, really resilient. But I think that you'll see that there's going to be more opportunities. There's going to be more volatility. There's going to be more shocks to the system. But even in the US, like the, the, the sort of commentary around the market is it's, that it's just bucking the trend. Uh, so maybe we see a short-term overcorrection. And what I mean by that is uh, the market's most likely going to continue to go up in perpetuity over time with inflation, all those sorts of things. But we might have seen you know, that first rise, but it might have just happened a little bit too quickly. And if that happens, then we might see a little bit of a, a, a medium-term correction, which will provide some really good opportunities to, to potentially get in. What I thought was going to happen was potentially a, you know, a 5 or 10% down on uh, on our lowest point, that, that didn't happen and it seems very unlikely. Uh, but markets are be running to their own drum at the moment. They're not listening to America. They're not look, listening to the riots. They're not listening to any of that sort of stuff. They're literally yeah. just looking on through. So really, really interesting times. But uh, we're almost getting back into that. Well, how do we diversify and, and create non-market linked investments now that we can add into portfolios so that we can capture these sort of rental yields that are out in the markets that are actually performing really, really well. Yeah. So uh, watch this space. There's going to be, I think, a, a whole lot of different types of investments popping up as a result of this as well. So do, do you think um, it'll be uh, like fund investment stuff or do you think it'll be individual stuff like direct stuff? Like, like, what, like what, what are you thinking? Uh, look, initially it'll probably be more syndicated type of deals. So funds that open and close yeah, uh, because it's sort of proof of proof of concept, right? But quite often once these funds sort of open and close and so it might, it might be commercial property. I reckon we'll probably start to see some, if the A-REIT stocks in Australia, so the, um, the, the property stocks in Australia, if they don't start to corner the automation market. And this was another thing I was chatting about uh, with my mate who's the, who runs the hedge fund. He was talking about a few acquisitions in, uh, in Japan, uh, and it's sort of that warehousing space. And then there are now a few different mergers into the robotic companies. And so that's interesting because now, and, and, and this is the part that I really love, because you, you, it's which is going to be the right mergers that, that take place? Which are the right strategic mergers? Because then everyone will be in on it. So as soon as like one, like let's just say, and there's, there's not, nothing about these guys because I've got no inside information here. Um, but let's just say Goodman Group as an A-REIT stock decide to go uh, and merge with one of the, the robotics giants or purchase them and, uh, and basically then bring that in and kind of go, well, now our business as a real estate uh, company or as a listed real estate entity is now as a specialist in robotic factories. And because uh, all of this stuff is yeah. emerging tech. Yeah. All there. Yeah. But we'll see this sort of stuff happen because Silicon Valley's still throwing huge amounts of money at VC, but there are, there are companies that are going to really struggle on the back of this. And, and as a result, they become where, where, whereby they would probably like to remain independent. They may not be able to get the cash to, to keep marching forward as, as fast as what they'd like. So we'll start to see these big strategic um, uh, mergers and, and things like that. So it's, it's going to be a lot of fun watching this stuff. You just got to have your ears. Doesn't that make sense? Hey, like just imagine, so, you know, that, you know, all of our, all of our factories are robotic led. So the underlying thing is, okay, we got some land, we got some, you know, a bit of dirt, but on top of it is we do robotic sheds, we do robotic delivery or whatever it is. It makes, it makes so much sense. Hey mate, is your uh, is your whiteboard about to fall over behind you there? Like I'm just seeing, like it's <laughs> it's the leaning tower of Pisa. Uh, it looks like it, but I don't know if it is. I'm just <laughs> that might be the old camera angle. It, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, all good, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good. But you know, like the, the combination of that, you know, you and I were talking about this the other day. You know, like I was, I've been looking at an opportunity. Um, you know about you know um, creating funds and syndication and stuff like that, you know, how do, how do you do it? And the old fashioned ways like heavy lifting and expensive and stuff like this and, you know, melding technology and all of these things together in those places makes a lot of sense. You know, I, pretty interesting conversation, I think, pontification for the future, but also makes sense to put a bit of money there because that's really where the, where the future of the growth of these things is. Like, you know, right now, one of the things for me 
is that, you know, uh, I think we mentioned it last time we were chatting, you know, the, the, the industrial uh, commercial stuff and, you know, and the logistic commercial stuff, I think is, is, has actually performed really well. Like, like even gone up in the COVID times where, you know, retail and, you know, offices have just been poleaxed hard. Um, you know, what, what, what are they going to morph into, you know, what, where's an opportunity for that stuff, you know? Um, and how's that going to reset? Because, you know, I was, I was driving, I was driving, I drove one of my kids to school. I drove back and some of these sets of shops, there was a set of shops that I saw. There were seven, seven empty retail shops, seven um, in um, 11 shops in, in that strip, that strip shops. And, and that, I'd never seen them empty in my entire life. Um, wow. So it's going to be crazy. It's going to be interesting to see because you and I both know you, you coach business owners, Andy. A lot, a lot of people run, you know, just because someone owns a business doesn't mean they're killing it. You know, matter of fact, most businesses don't survive, you know, past five years. And then those that get to 15 years are like bloody rare as rock and horse shit. Um, you know, but, you know, retail cafe or whatever, you know, like, What's going to attract those people back to those places? You know, like, like this is what I'm. This is there's so many empty places. Like, and, and it's just a it's a question out there, a pontification. You know, so um, you know, in in that sort of space, I'm really like I'm I'm thinking about it. You know, well, what I, one it, it provides new points of entry uh, for other businesses to come in, which are better capitalized or yes, or repricing. Like I don't know. It, you know, before it wasn't. I couldn't do it, but now the rent's ten grand instead of twenty grand. I can do it. Yeah, and look, mate. I reckon what we're going to stare down is we, and it may be that we go to larger places, right? So, uh, because maybe the social distancing thing is going to be, you know, mandated now for restaurants. So every restaurant takes up twice. Every cafe needs to be twice the size in order to make the same revenue uh, or the same profit. So maybe we'll see a shift in that dynamic. Who? Who knows? Because the, the landlords almost probably have to a cop a clip on the on the rent, and certainly in you know, places like Mornington where the rents are astronomical, you know, it's, it's like uh, man, downtown Manhattan sort of uh, prices. But it's logical to think that th those may have to come down a little bit and normalise, uh, so that new punters can come in. But yeah. mate, what we see and what we've already seen a little bit of it is you can't hold Australians back from spending cash like. It is unbelievable. I went out because, we, you know, you and I have been toying around with tech and stuff like that recently. So I've been down to JB Hi-Fi a couple of times just to grab, you know, a, a cable here and there. And, mate, it's packed. It is absolutely packed. And when when you give the people the ability to get back to some sort of normalcy, I reckon you're going to see an absolute explosion in these areas. So the money that would previously have been distributed across 20 restaurants is probably going to be distributed across 10. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what's the well, flip on through, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, and, and this goes to, you know, you, you and I, um, you know, members of the K2 community, Kerwin Ray, you know, there's probably a bunch of people sort of tuning in tonight from the Kerwin world, you know, you know, what, where's your war chest, you know, on the other side of this. And, and this is part of, um, Part of what we discovered, you know, by accident on the GFC, we got through the GFC on the other side of it, you know, competitors, people who didn't have their war chest, they didn't have a plan, they didn't have a pivot plan, whatever, you know, they, they got smashed and knocked over. And, you know, like you said, you know, there's three restaurants and now they're where there used to be 22, you know, those three are going to be killing it for six, eight, 10, 12 months, 18 months. My challenge to those people Andy, maybe it's just, you know, a way to maybe wind up the night. We're sort of getting close to the, you know, the hour or whatever. But my challenge to those sort of people, and maybe you can speak to this for the last sort of five or 10 minutes as well, is don't forget or please remember, like, the shortcomings or, like, the, the shortcoming or what got you through COVID just right now. Because... I always I challenge everyone. If the government didn't step in for you, would you would have got like would you have gotten through? Did you have enough cash? Did you have enough buffer? Had you planned for the rainy day? You know, business owners, property investors listening in, either one of you. Like we talk about it all the time. Like you know, 
cash, uh, a, a buffer, a buffer in your uh, every single property. Uh, I say minimum five, if not $10,000 of cash buffer for every investment property you own in a liquid redraw slash offset account, right? Um, as buffer, as war chest. If you're a business owner, six months, 12 months of expenses, whatever the number is, you know, whatever that number is for you, depending on your cash flow cycle and your sale to cash scenario, mate, uh, remember the lessons maybe is, is something in that space. You know, what would you say to business owners or people listening in? You've, you've done this thousands of times. Like you, you see it, the heartache of that stuff, you know, in real life right now. Um, you know, I, I'm grateful that, and it looked like just a touch wood, you know, I'm grateful that we, we don't have a single business that's gone under, yeah. uh, that's one of our extended clients. And, uh, and a lot of that has been because, I mean, you know, how I've been waxing lyrical for the last, you know, five or six uh, years in, a, in regards to war chest and, the, the standard response is if you don't have three months worth of uh, the ability to earn no revenue, uh, sorry, a war chest that can survive you and your team for three months, whether that be debt that you've got, you know, offset uh, amounts ready to rock and roll. If you don't have that, then it's not a matter of when you're going to go out of business. It's a matter of, sorry, not a matter of if you're going to go out of business. It's a matter of when. Um, and, uh, and I guess that's, that's very, very true now, but there's also the opposite side of it is that you then need to deploy, right? So there, there are times to be quite conservative and that's when you need to be conservative when things are going really, really well, believe it or not. And when things are going really, really poorly, now is where you need to be starting to deploy the smart cash. Yeah. Uh, so you've got to, I guess the one tip to move out of this is that you've got to have a, a plan to see through COVID and how you're going to bounce back. If you don't have that now 12 month, three year plan as to how you're going to take advantage of this new time and advantage is, is a controversial word in this context, but there are advantages for everybody coming out of this in any field. You've just got to look close enough and probably the more devastated your industry uh, the greater the advantages that are, are going to be around. So you really got to look and go, okay, I've had the war chest. It's gotten me through. So what's the strategic position out of this? And, and you've got to be able to spend it to, uh, to harness the fact that you were conservative coming in. Invest it hard. Well, I just want to share this, and you've, you've given me this one before, great by choice. Mate, like, I don't think there's a better book right now for anyone to read or listen to. This is the audio. You know, I've listened to it twice now in the last three months. You know, it's this, it, it, it's fantastic. Jim Collins, anyone listening in, like, guys, grab it, download it, read it, read it twice, listen to it three times. You know, it's this, like you said, um, you know, when good times are around, like, you know, you're looking over your shoulder going, what's going to go wrong? Because that's, that's, the, that's the kind of attitude you need to be. And then right now, if you go, shit, I've actually got some coin and, you know, seven of, the, seven of my competitors have just been wiped out. Now, how can I take advantage of this, you know, in, in this opportunity? That's what business in is. Like business, really, at the end of the day, like I've said a few times, Andy is like, it's a full contact sport. There's no prisoners on this gig. You, you, you take the floor. You either win or you die. Like that's that's how that's how it is. It's very very rarely Michelle is listening in. Michelle, how are you, buddy? Um, I hope your house is going well. Um, Michelle is saying, you know, I'm grateful I sold my business, you know, last year. You're very rare, Michelle. You know, very rare that you got to retire gracefully out of this game of business. You know, um, and um, yeah. so, uh, so well done. Um, but yeah, there's got to be a plan in and around that. But uh, maybe that could be a good theme for us uh, next week. Andy is talking about, you know, planning structure, you know, in those sorts of things, um, you know, for business owners, for property investors, you know, uh, you know, maybe we can talk some tactics next, next, next week, as well as some yeah. quantifications and stuff. It might be kind of cool. But there's a, there's a few questions at my end. I don't know if on your your end if there's anything that's come through. But uh, Mate, I'm, I'm not I'll, sure I'll that we're up. <laughs> I'm not sure that we're up. They're on my page, but I can't find it. So we'll just stick with yours. 
Uh, cool, mate. So uh, everyone said hello. This is Jake. Say hi, Jake. <laughs> hello. <laughs> All right. You want to come around? You want to sit over there? You can be. What are you using the ATM? Yeah, we're, we're doing a live stream here. So, uh, you know. Dad. Yeah, yeah. It's going out to the whole world. So many people watching. You know? How many people are there? <laughs> it's good. But uh, hey, hey, listen. No, uh, we might give it a we might give it a, a finish there, Andy. I think uh, maybe uh, it's been good. It's been good tonight. Like takeaways for me and encouragements for for everyone is like, listen, first home buyers slash this grant thing. You know, get hold of the free cash. Spend the money, gang. Spend it because that's what's going to help our economy. And if it benefits you too, then awesome, awesome stuff. Like I'm pumped about it. Um, I can help a lot of people and it helps my business as well. Sit down with me, buddy. Um, ah, and uh, mate, uh, you know, one well, of the takeaways for you, Andy, mergers and acquisitions, some interesting things happening in that, in your neck of the woods to keep an eye on. Um, yeah. you it's time to deploy some cash in there. Yeah, I think I think slowly and methodically uh, at the moment is, is a good way to be. And then, I think you're you're right. There is is really having that plan as to how you're going to move forward, because otherwise it's just going to be one of these things that that came and went, and uh, and you're going to have those moments of regret, which is, geez, I wish I'd done this. Geez, I wish I'd done that. <laughs> so it's it's sort of time now to put the head down and go, okay, let's let's plan out of this. So whether you're a business, whether you're investing, whether it's property, whether it's super, whether no matter where you're at, uh, even you know, if you're a salaried employee, I'd be looking at your career and I'd be looking at going, okay, what is the next three months? What's the next six months? And what are the next three years going to be like and how can we plan through it? And on the mergers side, if you're in small small to medium business, geez, you know, I'd be looking around now and kind of understanding who, our, who else is out there. We've all been humbled in some way, shape or form by what's going on. So the good thing about a little bit of humble salts is that... Uh, they taste a little bit salty, but geez, they make you a hell of a lot more approachable for these sorts of conversations. So I think even not just at the investment level, but at the at your business level, be looking at the opportunities and change the sets of the lenses that are in your eyes. You know, go start to get a little bit offensive, um, not, you know, not not as in telling people to go, but uh, get a little bit on the front foot. And, on the front uh, foot, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sweet, mate. Mate. That's good. Mate, wise, wise words indeed there, mate. Um, don't miss the opportunity, really. You know, um, like you said, I look back on the GFC and I wish I would have bought, you know, five times as many things as I could have or, or, or I did, you know what I mean? So you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, don't miss that one for, for people right now. So if you want to check out something, just as we're, as we're sort of signing off, we'll have a, have a look at this, these little beasts. These are the cars that I was talking about uh, a little while beforehand. Yeah, right. And uh, they're absolutely incredible. These things absolutely fly. They can almost go sideways uh, while going full tilt forward. And uh, mate, be looking at this sort of stuff because it's just absolutely incredible what's going on out there. It is. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've been very focused on ourselves and in our own little worlds recently in order to get through all of this. But starting to to look out and keep an eye out for people like this, and as I said, this is an Australian um, uh, Australian CEO of this company doing incredible things offshore, and this is the result of a number of mergers uh, of, of successful companies with great IP uh, getting out there and, and really making a difference in the market. So keep your eyes open for the opportunities, and uh, and we'll try and bring as many of them as we can to you. Mate, awesome, buddy. No, no. I that looks awesome. Cool, mate. Well, listen, cheers. Enjoy oh, the... Wait, hang on, no, hang on. Wait, there's more. This? Wait, there's more. There, this, this is the cool part. I, I just stopped too early. Check this. So, this is how these little suckers can move. Wow. That, that... <laughs> Imagine putting in a car that doesn't... That's real. <laughs> That's not real. That's so fake. It's not fake, Jake. It's real, man. That's a real driverless car. Yeah, that, that's super funny. I thought it was just edited like. No, no, that's for real, Andy. Yeah, there it you go. reminds me a little bit of Frogger. <laughs> it does. Absolutely. 
Cool, mate. Well, it's good to chat, mate. As always, love love chatting with you on Friday. You've got an amazing brain. Um, and uh, I need there's pizza. plenty more than just your brain, that's for sure. But uh, uh, tonight, it's been good to get your pontifications, mate. And hopefully everyone's enjoyed it. We've had a few thanks from everyone signing in. And, uh, mate, uh, um, look forward to maybe catching up next week and maybe talking maybe a little bit of tactics and stuff for people as well. Um, let's, uh, let's do a little bit of work on that. So... All right, guys. Thank you. Jake's, Jake's uh, enjoying the head banging here and uh, we'll sign off. <laughs> Happy long weekend. He's looking for his pizza. All right, mate. Thanks, buddy. See you, mate. See you. Bye.